A few years back, I co-hosted a television program for the E! Network called Hollywood Death Trip. We covered a few different murders around Los Angeles, Johnny Lewis and Dorothy Stratton. But this one, Brittany Murphy, was pretty interesting because we uh, got to go up to the house where Brittany lived and died. And I actually got to interview Angelo, Brittany Murphy's father. His perspective on his daughter's death was fascinating. And here it is. Well, the house actually uh, was destroyed a couple of years ago. We're going to where it stood. Actually makes me feel better that it was ripped down. Uh, it was uh, December 20th, 2009, by 7.30 in the morning. Brittany's mother walked into the bathroom and saw Brittany's body on the floor. And paramedics arrived shortly afterwards, and she was taken to Cedar sinai Hospital, where she was pronounced dead at 10.05 a.m. The official cause of death was acquired pneumonia. Anemia with multiple drug intoxication was also listed as a cause of death. Six months later, Brittany's husband, Simon Monjack, would die in the house that was right there of the exact same thing. We're gonna meet someone with a unique view of what may have happened to both victims. Brittany's dad. Hello, sir. How you doing? I'm Scott. Scott, how you doing? Nice Scott? to meet you. This is Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Hi. How are you? Have you, uh, have you been back to the house? No, not since uh, the tragedy. Can you tell me what Brittany was like? She, she was a sweet kid. A uh, kind, as kind as you can get. Uh, she just was a, a, a perfect little lady since the day she was born. When was the last time you saw Brittany? Uh, approximately four months before she died. Forgive me for launching into this. How do you think that Brittany passed away? Uh, she, I believe she was murdered. Coming up, the untimely death of Simon Monjack. Natural causes or something more sinister? They both died of the exact same thing. And let's face it, the odds on that, you probably wouldn't bet 10 cents. Then, Midnight Murder in Beverly Hills, the mysterious death of publicist to the stars, Ronnie Chasen. It doesn't make any sense to me. And later, we recount the creepy details of the last night of Ashley Ellerin's short life. She was last known alive at 10.15, and something horrible happened in that 30 minutes. All next on Hollywood Death Trip. Danielle Harris and I are talking to A.J. Bertolotti, Brittany Murphy's father, and he's just dropped a shocking revelation. How do you think that Brittany passed away? Uh, I believe she was murdered. By whom? I wish I knew by whom, but it's within the circle. Like Monjack, they both died of the exact same thing. And let's face it, the odds on that, you probably wouldn't bet 10 cents. Right. There was something that came up that I thought was unusual. After Brittany died, there were stories about Sharon and Simon, and they were insinuating a romantic relationship. I believe it. Do you? Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. But yet, Monjack, I uh, sort of uh, forgave in a way, but uh, because he died, like I said, from the exact same thing she did. You thought that uh, Monjack was, had something to do with Brittany's death. I think he was involved in it, yeah. But, but then why would he die of the same thing? Then he got the dirty end of it, see. Because he, he went away, too. You're painting a, a rather sinister uh, picture. It's just a case of, of, of getting it off my head, if I could, and uh, seeing that she does get justice. Uh, she deserves it. Thank you. Pleasure. AJ's allegations of a relationship between Sharon and Simon is his take on the situation. Sharon Murphy has refuted the rumor that she and Simon were romantically involved and called the allegations disgusting. We're going to head downtown right now to the LA County Coroner's Office where we're going to meet my friend Craig Harvey, who's the Chief of Operations. And Craig is going to provide details about what was exactly in Britney's system. How do you, uh, how'd you become friends with the coroner? 
Believe it or not, he respects what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Is this your first time, though, to the uh, uh, coroner's office? Yes, it is my first time. And you won't I, forget it, I the promise The next you. time, I bet you I won't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Hello, Scott. Steve. How, How are you doing? doing? Good to see you. This hi. is Danielle. Hi. Danielle, nice hi. Nice to meet you. Please come in. Shall we? Thank you. Danielle actually has a lot of interest in this case because she was, she was friends with Brittany. What was her official cause of death? Her official cause of death was community-acquired pneumonia and she had what's known as an other condition or other significant condition, and that was anemia. Mm -hmm. Those were the things that the medical examiner felt were her cause of death. Can you explain to me how anemia kills somebody? In this case, it didn't kill her. Right. It contributed to her death. We're talking about somebody who probably didn't take the best care of herself. Not eating properly and getting sick a lot, working too much. Right. And uh, what drugs were found in her system? Um, there were a lot of different drugs found in her system, right. but they were at therapeutic or sub-therapeutic levels. What does that mean? The levels indicate that the drug was used recently, but it wasn't necessarily the cause of death. Mm -hmm. She had pneumonia, she had trouble breathing, mm -hmm. and uh, that is probably what ultimately claimed her life. There's no she like cocaine. You know, there were so many rumors over the years that she got so skinny because of drug use. And, and I, as well as I knew her, never saw her not excited and not happy. And I cannot imagine for one moment that she would be someone that would do cocaine. Right. So. And, and that, that wasn't found. Simon Monjek died such a short period of time after Brittany Murphy did of the same thing. Community acquired pneumonia, I believe, was was Simon. Did they get it from each other? Probably not, because there was significant time between the two deaths. Five months. I hadn't talked to her for a couple of years uh, before she passed away, so curious. I don't have access to this stuff. Obviously, I get to read what everybody else gets to read. There's the assertion by individuals that she may have been poisoned. We don't test for poisons routinely. If somebody does come to us and say, we think somebody's been poisoned, we ask them to be very specific and so if we're going to test for poison then we're going to look for those specific poisons in our uh, test results. Mm. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking time with us. Thank nice you. to meet nice you. To meet you. Well, how you doing? You doing okay? I am, um, I guess I've been holding that in for a while. <laughs> I'm okay. Still a little... Whew. Stiff? All right, all right. Light me up. Special thanks to the late A.J. Angelo Bertolotti and my friend Craig Harvey, the former Chief of Special Investigations at the L.A. County Coroner, and everyone who worked on Death Trip. And until next time. You heard me.